Hello and welcome to a practice session for me. I did one of these videos a few weeks ago and I didn't say anything because that's usually what I do when I'm practicing, but I figured it could be interesting to see inside what I do and why not with a 360 view so you should be able to see my music, my practice at Modacity, my practicing buddy William computer. I'm just gonna take you through what I do probably just for my technique portion, although maybe I'll get into repertoire, not sure how much time I have today. But what I start off with is getting my Praxat Modacity going, and I have everything just built out here in order. I like that so that I don't have to think about what I'm gonna practice. When I pick up my bass, I can just start practicing because it's all planned out, and I've done many videos about that, uh, which I will link up to if you wanna dig into that. So I start by hitting Tune, Rosin, Get Set. The reason I do that is so that there is a timer going showing me that the work has begun. So I will Tune, which I just played a concert yesterday. So this is more verification. And good. I just put on a little bit of rosin. I've been using this leatherwood bespoke, but I use many kinds of rosin. I also combed out my bow hair a bit, which I've got a short video about that has either come out or is coming out soon. And that's just this is just a prompt for me to get going. I also generally during technique drink a cup of coffee. This is from the gym. And speaking of the gym, I do I have I just about before any practice session, I have already gone to the gym, so I have worked out, I've done some stretching, I've gotten my body moving, and so if I didn't do that, I would probably start out with some stretches or something like that, or probably take a walk just to get the blood flow going, but that's all happening. So I'm just gonna dive right into the bass, and with this app, I just click this, and it asks me to rate my competence, and I think I was competent enough getting ready. <laughs> so uh, find out where you're at with your body. I started to, uh, bow and body, I started to add this into my routine after seeing Chicago Symphony principal bassist Alex Hanna uh, do a class at the Pittsburgh ba Double Bass Symposium about eight months ago, and I just start to, you know, just play some open strings. body scan. I'm starting at the top of my head, going down. I'm making sure that my shoulders are feeling relaxed. I'm making sure that I'm feeling nice and connected to the floor and that I'm not putting weight on either my left side too much or my right side too much. That my knees are staying bent and I'm just like approaching things with like a nice, relaxed, free, open feeling. Lots of open strings to start. And this is, I'm not going to do this for So I'm trying to play intervals that are nice and simple. And also checking in with my body, making sure there's not anything that's feeling tight or any tension. And so you'll probably see me doing some of this throughout my practice session. I also like to go back to neutral frequently. So I just go and I just put my hands here on the bass and just really checking in and making sure that what I'm doing on the bass is as close to what I'd be doing if I wasn't on the bass. So I'm not holding my body strangely or anything like that. And much coffee consumed throughout this. Uh, how was that? That was pretty good. Rarely do I give myself five stars because very rarely do I feel like I'm doing a five star job, but I I'm, that felt pretty good. So. Next up is a bit of work out of Lauren Pierce's wonderful book, Scale, Scales, Scales, and I will link up to what I'm talking about here so you can check out these actual books and materials and some videos for some of these. Uh, I do a key a week, and I go through the circle of fifths or fourths. I can't remember how Lauren has this laid out. So I'm an E flat now. Now, I do not necessarily do her fingerings, and I don't necessarily play all the octaves or anything, but this is just kind of a nice way to get going with the scales. And I'm honestly not sure how much of this I'm going to do today or not. I'm just gonna dive in and I try to, this, I right now I don't have any time constraints. It's uh, after lunch and I don't have anything for the rest of the day. So I'm not in a crunch for this time, uh, this, this technique time. Oftentimes I am and I have like a half hour to 45 minutes. So I might move through things a little faster uh, on a day like that than when I have more time, but we'll just see. So I am going to set my E flat capo so that I have a nice sympathetic vibration going 
as I'm playing. No metronome for me today, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for fingerings. Let's see. I'm gonna start no vibrato. And anytime there's an open string or harmonic, I'm probably gonna verify. with the bass, it's not going too much this way or too much this way. I like the thumb on the harmonic. I like to do no vibrato, frequently going up, just for a nice pure sound, and then vibrate on the way down. Look around and make sure that I'm not getting too down on the bass. I want to. I have some windows in here, which you can actually see on the 360. But I, so I like to make sure that I'm glancing out of the window occasionally, and just not. The more down with my head I get, the more closed off I feel like my playing gets. So just. And if I need to look down, that's fine. I just don't want to be down. I'm going to vary the fingering on the way down, and I realized. I can go all the way down to this low E flat. And you'll notice the vibrato is very conservative at this point. It's just kind of getting the motion going. Check that. Really try to get that G ringing. think about making the string go fat, as my friend Dennis Whitaker says, and I've got my coffee and my practice buddy. Okay, so I'm going to now start doing these slurs. I've got my Bluetooth foot pedal on here, and this is just to get a little bit of velocity going in the left hand, but not the right hand, still moving slowly with the right hand. Nice full bow. So I'm going to do quarters now. And now I'm thinking about getting a nice close in my left hand and then making sure I'm just totally relaxed after I close. I'm always trying to think about something. So I'm not just sitting here noodling uh, mindlessly, uh, but I've, I've got some sort of goal I'm trying to achieve. So right now it's just clarity of closure, especially in the low notes. Yesterday we were playing Stravinsky's Symphony in Three Movements, and so I was going a little crazy with the rosin, so I'm, I'm a little stickier than I might optimally be. I like to start off kind of conservative with rosin, and then add more as I go, and I always have my comb here, just in case. I was hearing a little bit of grit. You might not hear it on the 360 cam, but a little grit on the E string, so I'm just gonna break up a little bit of that rosin. It's a terrible sound. It's like nails on the chalkboard, but it works, and those cheap combs work fine. In my experience anyway. Okay, so now we're gonna do uh, eighth notes. So we're... and I will actually turn on a drone. So let's put a, so we're in E flat. I like to draw on the fifth, so I'm going to drone on a B flat and get it going. There we go. Maybe uh, down an octave. There we go. That should work. 
turn it up a little bit. And now I'm going to do uh, the sex tuplets. That's next, and I'm going to just have the draw on as a reference. I will not go too fast. in focus and as the velocity increases I try to make sure that I'm still thinking about the big muscle groups and that I'm really staying nice and chill and relaxed and really feeling like I'm nice and tall and kind of connected to the floor. So now uh, 16th notes. I like this to start off. It's just like a nice, good way to get things moving. E flat is not the most resonant key, of course, that there is on the bass, but um, I like to make sure that I'm, if, I, if I don't uh, move through the circle of fifths, I get stuck in G my entire life. So since we have the time, or I have the time, let's go and do a little bit of thumb position work. We'll find, oops, if I can find it, what key am I in again? E flat. Uh, a... I swear I know my circle. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we are going to do this thumb position exercise, and I am going to follow Lauren's fingerings here. So we're going to start on the fourth string, that's the E string, with the thumb. Now, the cool thing is because I have this uh, extension, I have actually a harmonic right there, which is pretty cool. I, I haven't done these in like... Uh, well, I've, I've, I've had very weird practice because the last five weeks have been something in San Francisco Symphony. So it's been like six weeks since I really dug into these, maybe two months since I really got into these. So I'm going to go slow just to remember how this section of scale, scale, scales works. So it's, uh... And there's a reason why we don't love the E string up here. It's wolfy. get good quote-unquote good tone pretty funky but it's really good exercise I never even realized I had a wolf up here I so rarely play this note then Lord moves you right here so now we try a new orientation as you go to two right here. And I'm trying to make sure with these that I am letting the neck come to my shoulder. I'm not bringing my shoulder up to the base. That can be a little bit uh, of a bad habit that you can get into. And if I'm sitting, this is less of an issue. But uh, for various reasons, I'm left-handed for one of them. I find that standing, practicing kind of evens things out for me and gets my right arm working in a way that I like. So I generally stand these days when I'm practicing, stand if I'm playing solo. If I'm playing in a professional orchestra, I generally sit down. Um, but I like to be able to do both. And I find that if I practice standing, I can sit down no problem. But if I just practice sitting, standing gets kind of funky. So for many reasons, I'm standing a lot these days. So now we are going to go now, let's see, two. trying to do the best I can with what is given to me right here. So these are, this is not my ideal beauty register right here, but it's kind of like lifting weights. It feels really good. Then, we're, you know, if you put on ankle weights and wrist weights, then you take them off, it feels nice and light. As soon as I go over to a place where I'd be more traditionally doing thumb position, no problem. Okay, so I am just going to move on. That was okay, but I'm going to say 
three and a half. And I'm using this app Newsic right now, uh, but I generally use Fourscore. I just got in the habit of using Newsic for my technique. It's a cool alternative uh, to Fourscore that I, I like. Okay, uh, so Boardwalking, Hal Robinson's great book, which I've done a video about, which I will link up to. Uh, I Because I'm doing the linear scales out of Lauren's book, I'm just doing the arpeggios out of Boardwalking right now, but I am going to leave the E-flat cape, uh, capo open, and Hal actually gives you fingerings uh, that include that low E-flat, so perfect. Okay, so... Starting off now, I can draw, but not going to right now, especially because I'm moving through these different chords and, and just or arpeggios rather. So, so major. I'm really thinking about nice and smooth shifts. there with that e flat string. I'm also thinking about my bow, believe it or not, and my bow arm, and really just making sure that I'm having everything just kind of come from the back and the shoulders. And this is what happens when I talk and I do these, I lose my place. Is it fun? Yeah. I'm going to keep moving. That wasn't the best intonation of all time, but... And there is a balance that I'm always trying to strike between uh, moving through something and, and, and just keeping the momentum going, even if something gets a little out of whack and making sure I'm not just being sloppy and making bad mistakes and playing out of tune. So while I was doing those right there, I was trying to just kind of get through it. And so, and I will uh, sometimes, you know, I'll, I will all frequently allow myself to go back a few notes and just sort of polish. It's kind of like the record spinning. And then I really just take it and I like work out a little part and then keep the record spinning but it you know if we get philosophical or if i get philosophical the the you know almost nothing i do is well nothing i do is perfect and so i have to make sure that i'm, I'm striking a balance between being overly perfectionist ick and sloppy so that's what i'm always trying to uh, balance and also pushing myself but not to the point where it gets frustrating. It's kind of, again, I was just at the gym, so I'm thinking gym, thinking about lifting weights. You know, if I go uh, 10X what I did yesterday, that's not gonna work. If I do the same every single day, I'm, I'm not growing and developing. So just trying to find that spot where you're just pushing things a little bit into the yellow in terms of speed or challenge or, or giving yourself a puzzle to solve. I find that all to be helpful um, with technique practice. That was okay, but not. Certainly not 4.5. Okay, upper register. So I did a recital in Italy this spring, and it made me realize that I need to just spend time in the upper octave of the ba or bass, you know, thumb position area, just every day. I tend to neglect that area, and then I go and 
play recital and I'm not as happy <laughs> as I, as I want to be. So what I am going to do today, because this piece uses drop D tuning, even though this movement does not. I'm going to open up my, my D closer so that I have that, just so that the resonance of the bass is right. Small thing. I'm mean, I barely leave the G string on this. And I'm going to go through this, this is by my, my friend, the wonderful Andres Martin. I'm going to go through this twice. Once without vibrato, once with vibrato. So just thinking about the architecture of these shifts. I'm going to let there be some sound in the shift. I'm going to make sure that I like what I'm doing, both in terms of the non-vibrato and the vibrato. but I sometimes can't help myself. In the left arm, and there are, are two, there's one. I, there are two possible reasons. I think the likely reason is just that I've been playing a ton with all the symphony subbing, so my my arms are a little bit um, just feeling it. And also, I haven't been in thumb position in the last five weeks because I've been playing in the symphony. So there's kind of new motions. Also, I did a weightlifting class today, so that could have something to do with it. But just reading my body, I think I think it's just the amount of the new variable right now is actually practicing away from the symphony. So I think it's just a little bit of fatigue. So not a big deal. I'm just gonna keep my, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna check in with my body. I'm gonna take a second, just shake out. Just over here, shake out over here. I could put the bass down, but ah, I'm just taking a micro break. And this isn't particularly hard on my body, this, this piece either, but I'm just checking in with the sensations. And I'm just going to add a little vibrato or a little more vibrato, I guess. I'm also thinking about how, about developing the sound through maybe a little more bow weight and bow speed or variability. tension coming in my jaw, so I'm trying to, you see me moving my jaw around, I'm just trying to check in. And I'm not loving all these shifts, but I'm trying to do my best. I'm feeling that extra rosin <laughs> that I put on yesterday.
And so this is Sueños by Andrea, Andres Martin. I realized I didn't say that. And there are five movements. So what I do is I just practice a different movement every day. Really just the upper register stuff, although it's all upper register. So tomorrow I'll do agua. And today's Monday. So tomorrow I'll do agua, morir, and uh, vuela, and then escape. Very cool. And I'm sure I'll play this again sometime soon. And it's just a great piece to work on upper register. So that went all right. Three and a half, because a little not loving the shifts. Okay, so now this is the real non sequitur, probably for a lot of people. I try, I am not a composer, uh, but I do try to make stuff. Uh, when, when, when I can, and I do like dabbling in the electronic music. So w during my practice session, I, I make myself, or I get to, don't know where to put this camera, find a spot here. Um, I try to do some sort of creative thing on Ableton Live every day. So here is good old Ableton Live. Here is my push to, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. If, uh, if, I'll certainly do some drums. So I'm gonna to go to add device, and I'm going to go to drum kits, give myself a little volume over here, and let's find uh, fog juice. Sounds like a good, good one to play around with. So let's see. Um, And I can build a group. I'm not going to spend long on this, don't worry. I know this is highly unrelated to bass. But I think it's good to have some sort of little generative process. So I'm just going to make a loop. I'm going to duplicate it. Put that on the... And then maybe duplicate it one more time. Maybe I'll put the repeats on, do 16ths. I'll have to record it. And then I will, uh, let's add one more thing briefly. And I like it because I'm a nerd to choose the same scale that I'm doing for the week, except I don't want to jam out an E flat major. That sounds, the best it will sound like is video game music and uh, bad video game music at that. Um, so, okay, scale E flat minor. Let's find an instrument. Let's go. Uh, fuzz clap. Cool. You recorded? <laughs> Whatever. Okay, and obviously this is not, uh, winning any awards here, but just, uh, just let's just uh, try to clean that up slightly. Uh, one more time. Okay, that made it worse. Okay, but that's enough. I just want to do a little bit where I am not playing something that uh, somebody else wrote, be that an exercise or uh, uh, so. Some of the times they turn out better than that, but it's just the, the doing of it that's important to me. So, okay. Uh, great. So Ableton, three minutes of that. Thank you for enduring that if you're still watching this video. Now, scale, oops. Separate bows, slurs, and off the string uh, every day. So that's, that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I've gotten out of the habit of playing the uh, separate bows, I'm just doing slurs and then I'm doing some off the string. So I'm gonna do that. So what we'll do is start down here and I will give, uh, I, I sometimes use a metronome, sometimes I don't, um, but I'm just gonna do slurs. So I'll start with two, just two octaves.
Now I'm about to hit that E flat on a down bow. So when that happens, I switch to the next, uh, so I go one number up. So I was doing twos, that was threes, just that over rosin yesterday, trying to break it up. Now I'm going to do fours. So we'll do twos, threes, fours. So I'm gonna do fours. Just letting the tempo organically evolve, get slowly faster over time, so fours. of tension kind of coming in here as I'm trying to think and go through those uh, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, limit that but I could feel my jaw kind of moving a little bit and this is great for practicing in front of a mirror I have too many things going on right now so uh, no mirror at the moment but uh, yeah just trying to make sure that I'm checking with my body and staying nice and loose okay so those are slurred scales then uh, get, just getting my bow moving off the string. And what I'm thinking about for this, I am not carrying, oh, by the way, I always have a little towel next to me. This is a high, it's like the fiber count or something. It's like, it's like a different sort of material or weave than your average towel. Uh, Scott Pingle, the principal base of San Francisco Symphony, gave this to me. And it seems to be like pretty good for, for a rosin collection. Um, uh, so I'm, just, I'm trying to make sure that I'm staying nice and relaxed with this off the string, this initial off the string, starting to add some right hand velocity to my practicing. So I'm going to start by doing four repetitions. And I'm really letting the bow come from the air and land on the string. But the very first note is going to be from the string. So I'm starting into the string right here, got the string. And then I get it going. So here we go. Huh, whoops, missed. sure that I'm I have enough meat on the meat on the stick right here in terms of my hand I don't want to get too up like this I want to be nice and have, I don't want to get this way either though so it's a balancing act really making sure that I feel like connection when I'm especially on the and my third and fourth fingers just feeling that I, I can really feel the frog there and that I'm, I'm staying nice and supple in my joints Oh, that's important. And then I do this is this is just a kind of like a warm up to get off the string and other strokes happening. So this is just kind of like the, the first thing I've done where I'm actually moving the bow faster than like pretty slow. So um, so okay, so I'm gonna do threes now. Now I'm now that I'm starting to do something, I realize I should probably I need to tighten my bow slightly. Yeah, that feels a little better. So we'll try that again. Yeah, and I'm feeling that fatigue in my left hand a little bit. It's not pain. It's just like. I feel like I've been uh, using my bass playing muscles, you know, then that's okay. But breaks are great when you're feeling that. And then maybe just a couple of 
wrist rolls. It's kind of like shaking things out. I always find that to be helpful. Uh, a couple of deep breaths. Okay, twos now. rosin and that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to keep it on the slower side. Let's start on the string. And I need to make sure, or I am trying to make sure, that I'm not locking up anywhere on the chain, especially like up here. I have a tendency to, to kind of tighten up, especially with off the string strings. So now ones. So I got a little bit of velocity going with the bow, and that's fine, and we're going to explore some more bow strokes in the next component, Strokin! Uh, Hal Robinson's, uh, uh, another wonderful book by Hal Robinson. And I use this as the Sevchik School of Bowing Technique, and I, I was recommended to do a more extensive, like example video of all these little cells, which I'm definitely thinking about. But what I do is I just go and I play like one or two or sometimes more of these every day, and I just I just check them off. So today I am doing number 61, so I will check it off, and I just work through the book just like a novel <laughs> of sorts, and by the, when I get to the the end, I go back to the beginning. So this is just, I just sprinkle this into my daily practice. So this is ba ba da ba da ba di da da. So. Try again. Sometimes I do more than that, but I'm kind of feeling, I sort of gauge how I'm feeling. I'm kind of feeling like moving on. I want to make sure I have a little bit of time for a repertoire today. And I'm going to break my practicing up. I'm going to do this session, and then I'll probably just export this video so you won't see my rep. That'll maybe be another video. Um, and then I'm going to go do, uh, do some other work. I have to do some work on my laptop and all that kind of good stuff. So just just do that, and then then I'll come back and play the rep. And if I can, I like to break up my day that way. So I do the more uh, this this part of the practicing, the technique building, the brushing your teeth, lifting weights kind of portion of my practice, and then then take a break, and then come back and practice the music at hand, uh, whatever's coming up. And it's going to be solo stuff today, because I have some stuff coming up in 2024 that actually is coming up. Uh, and and I haven't worked on that in like five weeks. So, okay, so I will reset my extension. And these are from Damon Allen Moore's wonderful course, Fractal of Fingering. These are the PDF exercises from that. Highly recommend that course. Uh, David's explanation is epic. He also has a book called Fractal Fingering. Um, but I, I love these. These I go through all sorts of different materials in this sort of second half of the technique session. Um, but my constants uh, for years since I was in, in college have been boardwalking and stroking. And then this has just, has seemed to, I like what it's doing to my playing. So I've kept it up. And so this starts off with this expansion exercise, uh, which is really cool. It's just uh, playing, going up chromatically and using every finger. And even as I'm demonstrating that, I can feel like a little fatigue in here. So I'm gonna really take it easy. Probably just do it on the G string today, although you could do it on all the strings, and I do for the way. So we'll just get up. to 
practice opening the hand from this point to that point. I actually do it on the D string. I've heard it once. That's all kind of good. So go to the D string. But I'm going to slow it down. Here, here's a fan expansion. Cool exercise. I'm doing uh, the speed uh, depending on how things are feeling so I, I, I I'm not using a metronome for these I'm just kind of going on instinct and once things are feeling good I'll say well let's maybe go a little faster downhill and see how that feels it is always trying to vary things or oh let's slow it down let's really analyze um, it's constantly looking at things in different ways and and just you know, just thinking about how can I vary this how can I uh, how can I think about this slightly differently how can I make this a puzzle that I can solve that's what this is all about to me and that uh, is good for now so I'll move on to my last piece of technique the wonderful Sturm etudes which I need to move off a of Sturm one of these days you can see I mark the date that I've done each one of these, and I go from number one to number 110, and then back to one. And I, I think I keep coming back to these because they're they're pretty easy. Well, not that easy, but they're they're not as crazy as some etudes get. And uh, it's just like a nice little nugget for me to work on. I generally, and I probably will today, record myself doing these. And I'm looking. It's like when the heck did I even do one? Oh yeah, wow, 10:25:23. And then before that, okay, so yeah, I got a couple days in during this symphony block, but it has been a minute. Uh, so, okay, today, what is today? Anyway, it is the uh, 13th, yeah. So I'll put 11, 13, 23 right here. And Modacity, this app I'm using, has a recorder built in, so I'm just going to record myself playing through it. Okay, not the not the steadiest rhythm of my life, but not too bad. I think my challenge for myself with this is, can I just make it sound a little more like a song? That's the other thing I like about these Sturm Etudes is that they, they generally have a nice melody or hook to them. And so I'm just going to see if I can just make this a little more expressive. That's my goal. <laughs> Get 
a better first note than that, though. any better at all. Let's listen. A little false start. I will skip. Here we are. Play. I think, I'm, I think I'm not just phoning it in quite as much uh, that time. So as my fitness instructor at the gym says, uh, fitness is a journey. And so is double bass playing and music making. And so I think we will end this part of our journey together. And sometime I'll put, do one of these for rep if folks want to check it out.